Hey, welcome back, everyone. Got more Age of Empires here. The map is Dry Arabia. And I'm up against my opponent, Anarin 8. They're playing as the French. I'm playing as the Abbasid. And I do like going up against the French as the Abbasid. I, I tend to do well against French. If we can hold off the Royal Knight harassment, then usually our two town center opening will just simply outclass their economy. Going with a double scout opening, and I went with it right away because I really want to deny sheep off of the map. Uh, French players do make use of sheep. They don't really have easy food options in the beginning of the game, so you'll often find them going for deer hunts or just grabbing up sheep and using them as efficiently as they can in the early game. And those Royal Knights, they cost a lot of food. I mean, the gold is usually what people focus on, but they also cost a hefty sum of food. So yeah, let's try and grab up these sheep, and we're doing a pretty good job. We're already up to five sheep. Got another at seven, and then another eight. Wow. So already up to 15. That's pretty good. Looking at the map and thinking about where I'm going to put my second town center, I could wedge it in this gap here between these trees. That'd be a very safe uh, option. Another option, the greedier option, is going for this deer camp, putting the uh, second town center right on top of them. And ultimately, I'm thinking I'll go for the deer because I can just kind of have my spearmen kind of patrol back and forth this area. It'll cover the berries as well. And then I just need to have maybe a few uh, spearmen over here to defend, maybe if I'm gathering gold and then the, the wood over here. And there are some wall-off options. There's really not much in this corner that I care about. So a wall across this gap would be really helpful. Or even just a wall across here. This looks to be a shorter distance. This will probably be good right there. Opponent gets a quick feudal age. I accidentally send my scout a little too close. He's quick on the draw, retreats his villagers. But my other scout is fortunately in a good position, and we can watch for when that first Royal Knight's coming out. So I'm hoping to have him loop around, get vision of the Royal Knight. But we also see him gathering stone. Looks like he just started. And that means less knight pressure, and he's probably going to get a second town center just like me. I'm getting the Spearman upgrade because he can produce Royal Knights. One or two of them are going to be a real hassle for me. So we need to defend. Don't want to get too distracted by that scout. There we go. But I've got my scout pretty much just sitting on top of his royal knight. We're watching where he's coming from. And I can always just, yep, retreat my villagers. I'm just going to take them off berries, put them on sheep. Because right now I'm gathering resources from too many locations for me to defend with my one hardened spearman. So we're just going to retreat over to these sheep for now. Really got to stay active with this scout. I need to know where his... Um, his royal knight went off to. Last we saw, okay, it's up here, near my stone. I'm gonna sick my spearman on them. I'll even have a spearman chase off his scout. Okay, looks like I'm being mobile with my scout. Okay, there's his other scout, watching my berries, probably waiting for when my villagers return to working on berries. Feeling good about this area. We've got three spearmen. Now we'll probably rally, hopefully over towards these berries. Yep, there's the switch over. And he's not going to produce all that many royal knights. It might just be this one royal knight, for all we know. Because he's going to feign going, like, uh, aggressive while on the backside making uh, a second town center. And it looks like I'm done with my... Oh, no, okay. I'm going to have my scout kind of do a quick pass around my base and then probably head towards his base just to get an idea of what he's doing. And, yeah, my spearmen are just chasing down his uh, units. He needs to get archers or nothing's going to happen here. And yeah, it's good that we're chasing off. I remember I, I brought my spearmen over here to chase them all off because this is where I wanted to expand. So we're going to protect this area because these, these uh, villagers are going to be exposed until this town center gets up. But he probably knows it's going up. Yeah, his scout's right there. I'm just going to have my spearmen kind of zone them out. 
We're trying to do battle with his scout. I love how the French scouts get these axes, these like hatchets. Look at him riding with it. Wow, that's really cool. Gotta love the little Civ details. We're still gathering gold. Uh, we don't actually have much in the bank because we have been spending it on upgrades. Little did I know at this point that my opponent is going aggressively into the Castle Age. It appeared to be a two town center opening and then straight into Castle Age. Because look at, look at his resources. He's got a big bank of food and gold. He could sink all of that into Royal Knights. But he's being smart. He's not, um, he's not committing to it. Here's those walls I was talking about. I like seeing this. Hopefully we get a little wall right there. Yep, close off that gap. That's going to make the angles of approach a lot better. Like, I'll pretty much just have to put a few spearmen here and then maybe patrol some spearmen across this big gap or at least keep a scout near the gap so that I know when his units are coming. Now, this is kind of nice. We haven't lost any villagers. We are dealing with his knights. Oh, that knight is getting hurt, but I don't think my spearmen can survive that. No. But we got reinforcements coming. And we are keeping villagers on stone because... Oh, we're the opposite. We want to play greedy. My opponent is definitely playing greedy, but we're going to play greedier. So we're going to get a third town center in the feudal age. That said, we are going to get some more uh, military production out. Good, get his scout. It's a big win. He's off of stone, so it looks like he's just gone for the single extra town center. There we spot his, uh, yep, there's his second town center. And he put it on the deer as well. So that's, uh, that's good to know. Lost a spearman there. Don't want to lose these villagers. He cannot come near these town centers because the arrow fire in response is so painful. Yeah, he's already lost an archer. All I need to do here is produce one horseman. This is maybe a little overkill, but uh, I really just need one horseman to clean up these uh, archers. Patrolling the back end with these spearmen. My scout notices him heavily mining gold, so I know he's going up to the castle age, and you're gonna see me pivot here. I'm realizing, oh crap, I shouldn't be making all these units. I need to be getting uh, villagers on gold and food ASAP. So I think I pivot a little bit here. Yeah, now we're just rallying villagers to gold. You'll probably see me take some villagers off of wood once we've got enough for our third town center. And there, he's already in the castle age. I'm nowhere near going to castle. I've only got 400 food, 300 gold, and way too much wood. But we are cleaning up those archers that he sent our way. Oh, would have loved to kill that scout. So our opponent's on two town centers and the castle age. We're going up to three town centers, and we're going to try and sprint to the castle age as fast as we can. Yep, we're pulling villagers off of stone. Looks like we're going to have them, yep, start mining gold. Yep, we've pulled a bunch of villagers off of wood, and now we're pretty much just focused on food and gold. Let's check income. Pretty even. Uh, I, I'm not making any more stone, so really this should be zero. He's ahead in gold. We're even in food. I'm ahead in wood. The issue here is if we take some economic damage in a moment. Oh, we find a weakened royal knight. We get the kill. Nice work, horseman. My opponent clearly skipped the chivalry upgrade early on. It's just too expensive. We're finishing up the deer camp. So we're going to need more food sources soon. We're going to have a, a food pinch coming up here in a moment. It's going to be painful. But we do have all of our sheep, so that's feeling really good. That's at least a, um, a thing we can fall back on. Sending my horsemen forward to maybe harass this stone, I run into man-at-arms. And that's good to know. Now we know what his composition is likely going to be going into the castle age and he is putting down a monastery that's a pretty quick monastery i think he's going to look to play the relic game we're going to get a forward outpost try to secure these berries because we know we're going to get squeezed on food soon enough and now we're going up to the castle age we're also putting down extra archery ranges because we know he's got man-at-arms they're a very slow unit so it's going to take a long time for them to get across the map and yes, the scout that we sent forward, we actually produced more scouts, very happy with that. 
Scout is spotting them and distracting them. Looks like he's rallying them to the left. Good to know. But we're just going to lead them around the map with our scout while we buy time as we go up to the castle age. It's taking so long for these man-at-arms to get over. We'll just lead them over to the left. No real worries there. Back here, we're just scouting. We find the guild hall. Looks like it's set to food right now. Interesting. And he's adding in another stables. So it's looking like it'll be a heavy man-at-arms knight uh, composition. We're coming forward. We're gonna grab these berries, getting down more outposts. Over here, these berries have been denied to us by these man-at-arms, and now the man-at-arms are coming. But that's okay, we've bought so much time, we're about to hit the castle age, and what are they going to attack? This town center? Maybe not. Okay, he's got even more. You can see, even in small numbers, they just beat my feudal age units. I'm just gonna walk right past them. If he wants to rally units to my base, I'll send units to harass his villagers on these berries. Thankfully, this scout is identifying a uh, weak spot. The moment we hit castle, you'll probably see me pump crossbowmen. Yep, there we go. With our three town centers, we're hoping to eventually get an income advantage, but right now it's still looking pretty even. Him maybe a little ahead. Current resources, we're both spending really well. We're very low. We're trying to fight his, um, his man-at-arms in small numbers. We want to keep them kind of split up, not all grouped up. So this is good. We're finding, we, we found like one or two villager kills down here. That was okay. But yeah, see his big ball of man at arms are here. What we need to do is kite them and keep our crossbowmen attacking them. This is bad. I don't want my crossbowmen just immediately running in to his man at arms. Yeah, we already lost one. So we're gonna retreat over to the town centers. We can always retreat our villagers in in case they're in danger. And that'll give us a bunch of arrow fire to deal with them. We're gonna also try and get these crossbowmen involved and start rallying our units here. So you can see we've already lost all those units. But now we've got more crossbowmen involved and now the arrow fire from the town centers is getting involved. And you can see, we can just keep kiting them. They're very slow units. Yep, the villagers all just disappear. They go inside the town center. They're now taking an insane amount of arrow fire and these crossbowmen are getting great shots in. Yep, we've even got knights. Knights will tank for the crossbowmen. So while all the man-at-arms swarm this knight, the crossbowmen are getting good shots in. So that's good, we're doing well there. We're trying to deny these relics, but his, ugh, his monks are already on the way. I'm actually gonna use a villager to attack him while we get a uh, arrow slits in placement here. Probably shouldn't have attacked him. Maybe he wouldn't have even noticed. Unfortunately, he finds my villagers that I sent over here. They were walking right past his scout, so I'm gonna lose a lot of villagers over here. And it looks like he's getting away with the damn relic. Ah, oh, we can't stop him. Glad we put the arrow slits in placement on this outpost. This horseman might get one or two villager kills, but yeah, now he's done. Over here, he's getting great villager kills. Looks like he got maybe seven, eight villagers. Only now do I notice and send them back. Damn, this villager is dead set on killing that monk. But now we've got castle age units and we lived. How much economic damage did we take from his uh, castle age unit pressure? All those man at arms and the horsemen and man at arms attacking here. I'd say we lost maybe seven, eight, nine villagers. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe more 10, 11. Could have been a dozen villagers. But we did kill one or two or three down here at his berries with our little counterattack. And it looks like my man at arms is in here and we're gonna kill his, uh, his monk. Nice. And this random man at arms is just gonna go to town on his villagers. Oh no, losing even more. This could be 20 villagers if I don't respond here. Unfortunate, okay, looks like we're retreating them. Damn, maybe another five. So we're definitely, definitely losing villagers. And let's see if that's affecting income. You can see he's way ahead in food, ahead in gold, ahead in stone. I am ahead in wood. I need another minute or two to recover or I need to do economic damage to him. And fortunately, we get the economic damage. 
We're going to take out his units here and move on to the villagers in this farm. And I'm rotating these crossbowmen down here. And this, we're getting so many kills over here. This is what we're looking for. Over here, we've retreated our villagers. We've already got units ready to go. We've even secured a relic. This is great. We're getting the economic damage that we needed to do. This will help us catch up. Yep, sending my crossbowmen around to try and find more villagers. Oh, this knight must have, like, so many kills to his name. Look at that. So maybe we've evened things up there. Let's check the income. Yeah, it's looking a little better. I'm definitely still squeezed on food. We need to make our transition to uh, farms. Though we do still have some sheep. Yeah, we're still gathering sheep. Let's check in on upgrades and the religious game. So for upgrades, it looks like we've got a lot of level one upgrades. We still need fitted leather work, but we do have a lot of ranged damage. So that's good for our crossbowmen. And the crossbowmen are effective against all of his units, the knights and the man at arms, really helpful. Religious game, we are on one relic. There's still a relic on the map. I think he has secured three at this point but we are securing a sacred site. So I would say he's ahead, but it's good that we're taking the sacred sites because that's pretty much our only other option. Engaging with his units here, we can see his upgrades. He's got uh, level one, both armors, and he's he gets his melee upgrades for free because he's the French. This isn't bad. The problem is I don't have enough crossbowmen and here come more royal knights. So he's probably gonna clean all this up, but I'm hoping we can trade efficiently here. Sending units around the map to check these uh, resource deposits. Down here, we were very successful. We found a bunch of villagers and target fired maybe like five or six of them all in a row. And we're annoying the hell out of him by having individual units burn down the walls that he's building for his entire base. Oh, there goes the monk probably grabbing that last relic here. Yeah. Should probably get this ram attacking. We're trying to come at him from a bunch of different angles. But now he's sending his knights out. Oh, I really wish we had gotten an upgrade on this uh, outpost, but we haven't been mining stone. We're walling up ourselves. That's a good move. And it looks like we're also putting down farms. The farm transition's beginning. Do we have the agriculture upgrade? We don't. We could use that. Yeah, we're sniping more villagers down here. Yeah, he's secured three relics. Looks like he's going to get this fourth. If only I had noticed... Oh, these wolves are messing up his monk. Oh my gosh. Oh, that poor monk. We're gonna build this mangonel here in the hopes that uh, we can start to attack his uh, villagers. Although I'm guessing I just, yeah, I didn't even pay attention. He just burns it and then retreats. And now we just have to burn this down. Ah, oh, that was a good play from him. We're rescuing this outpost from getting burned down. We're gonna fix it up. And we're securing this sacred site as well. So now it looks like, yeah, he's secured that last relic. He's going to be on four relics. I'm going to be on one, but at least I have a sacred site right now. Important thing here is that we attack from multiple, uh, multiple locations just to really annoy him. So while he's busy destroying this ram over here, my units are slipping through, walking right past his units, and I'm targeting villagers. Love it. I think ultimately we're starting to get ahead. Yeah, we're losing the religious game here, but we have done economic damage. And keep in mind this whole time we are on three town centers. So we can produce villagers very quickly. We're already up to 90. He's denying the sacred site. He can do that. This outpost is barely touching his... Uh, I mean, it's just kind of tickling his man-at-arms at this point. Economy's looking good. Could probably move this lumber camp. Looks like we never actually finished these walls. Would love to do that. Looks like he has built some walls near my base, kind of walling me off from the map. He's trying to secure this right side of the map. Fortunately, I still have some units kind of tucked away back here. Oh, and my units make it through the wall, and now we're killing villagers. 
he's got his uh, textiles upgrade for his uh, villagers. So he, th these are pretty tanky villagers. I need more units here to really do enough economic damage. But we did, we did get a few villagers there. Yep. And the moment he starts to retreat these villagers, I realize, okay, his attention is here, so let's split my units. He's gonna send an army to respond, so if we send our units all across his base, then he won't know where to go. We're stabbing down his, uh, his uh, cavalry with our spearmen, and we're trying to retake this sacred site. And you can see most of his farmlands are idle here, but he's going up to the fourth age. He's got the College of Artillery going down. But we find his villagers, as I suspected, there was a wood line here. So we're getting villager kills there. We're going to get villager kills here. And we can just keep these units around targeting his, uh, his villagers. And we get previews of his uh, unit composition every time we do this. He's running his units everywhere. He makes it to the Imperial Age, as we suspected, targeting down that villager. And you can see we're once again looking for places to go. His army is all in his base. He's just made it to the Imperial Age. I'm a little hesitant to send in my army. I'm going to knock down this Palisade Gate, but now I'm, I'm trying to decide, do I want to send in my units? He's got a lot of knights. I decide let's back off and instead start to put down our own structures on the map. This is probably a good time to put down more walls, look to go to the Imperial Age ourselves, and maybe put down some keeps. We're starting to get enough stone to do it. Yeah, just keep making holes in his, uh, his walls. Be annoying. You can see our composition is mostly spearmen. He hasn't really made archers. So I don't see the problem in making spearmen. We do need crossbowmen. That we are definitely lacking. But I'm glad to see siege workshops going down. We're still getting upgrades. Yeah, we're almost at all 2-2 upgrades. Yeah, here he comes in with his units. And now I'm realizing, oh, I'm about to lose my entire army. I think I retreat. Yeah, I'm going to split my units up a bit. I'm going to try and rescue the archers. I'll send these units in to die. He's being smart by keeping the monk with his um, cavalry. I really like this play. I think the French could really do with mixing monks in with their big uh, uh, royal knight army because chivalry's great. It does heal your knights over time, but it's so slow. If you can get something that's a little more efficient, like a monk, that, that's just great. Splitting up my units. These are going to go burn down some walls. Trying to secure the gold on the map. We find his villagers walling. They kind of cut through our walls, unfortunately. And we're getting a uh, keep down on the left sacred site. He's got his elite royal knights. He could upgrade his man at arms. That's probably the next upgrade that's coming. But these are some tanky knights. Now that he's in the Imperial Age, he could get the royal bloodlines for them. And that's just even more hit points for them. Fortunately, he hasn't done anything. He hasn't found these villagers on the gold vein. I'm really scared what he's going to do with this army. So you can see I'm responding with troops. But I should really be rallying all of my units together. I can't take on a force that strong with just these units. But well, maybe we can trade somewhat. That's pretty good. Keep in mind, we got the phalanx upgrade on these spearmen. So they're really doing damage to these knights. Oh, but here comes the keep. I don't think, yeah, we're not trading efficiently here. I don't see any Royal Knights. Okay, we, we got a, maybe a Royal Knight or two, but ouch. We really need to mass up our units, and now he's coming for us. He's going to take out these units, and I'm realizing that I'm on the back foot right now. We went Imperial Age behind all of that, and that's really reduced our unit production. So you can see I'm just making Spearmen and Crossbowmen. That's the unit composition we want but I really need them rallied into my base because he's coming to my base right now. Now that's good. We want to engage them in small numbers. If he wants to go after our villagers, go for it. We're surrounding his units and we're rallying straight here. The crossbowmen are getting great shots in. He's losing his units and I don't think he realizes it. Yeah, I'm losing villagers. I'll give him that, but we're over a hundred villagers and with three town centers, we can produce them back really quickly 
Now we're spending our money. Look at all these upgrades. Looks like we're upgrading our barracks units. So all of our man at arms and our spearmen. Would like to get the crossbowman upgrade, but oh well. Okay, this crossbowman is just going to take on this uh, royal knight. I don't think he's going to win. Oh, no, he did it. Down here, we once again broke through his walls, and now we're trying to kill villagers. And I'm just spreading units out. Yep. If these Royal Knights chase these units, then this Spearman will get kills on these villagers. Oh, yep. He's realized what I'm doing. Now he's got to keep on this Sacred Site, and that's the last Sacred Site that I really, truly need to secure. So... I'm eyeballing it. This is going to be our next target. We're queuing up a bombard to tear down the keep, and we're starting to move closer with these outposts because we need vision of the keep to really tear it down. Our units are cleaned up, but I'm never satisfied. I always want holes in his walls. I always want to be sending small groups of units into his base. We could probably produce a ram here. We'll see. He's kind of limited on resources. If we look at map control, I think he's secured this bottom third in a way. I've secured the top third, but the middle's starting to look a bit more and more under my control. I have outposts out. I have good vision. We're getting keeps down, and we're even getting our markets going. Oh, no. Did I not queue up this other market oh that's unfortunate looks like i've only got one producing but still we're up to five already and with all the upgrades for our traders as the opposite we should be seeing a good amount of wood and gold coming in nice there's the battering ram hopefully we can send that in i think i actually sent back a part of that army yeah i didn't want to send them all forward i felt like this was just too obvious and yeah there's a royal cannon oh Man, it does good damage against that battering ram. Though really a culverin would be better. Now we're beginning our siege. We got our own cannons. We're going to try and rip down this keep. We're going to send units around the backside. It's sometimes it's nice to come at a keep from multiple angles. It can be very effective. He's coming forward with villagers. He's thinking he can wall this off. Instead, he's just going to lose a lot of villagers. And he needs these villagers to repair this keep. He's got a good chunk of stone. He could repair the keep if he needs to. He's coming forward with some of his units. If he brings his units there, we'll chip through this wall and then eventually attack his villagers. You can see I've actually queued it up. Burn down that wall, burn down this wall, and then run into his uh, mining operation. We've got units sitting on top of our bombard. That's what we want. He's questioning going and repairing the keep, but here come my units on the back end. We already burned down a barracks, and now we find his gold operation here. He's desperately mining this gold as quickly as he can. This is probably his only gold source. We'll check income. Yeah, he was desperately going for gold. We're even on food. I'm ahead in wood. He's ahead in gold, but I think we just put a stop to it. He's coming forward with his knights, but they're in way too small numbers. He instead sent his army to the left. It's looking like we're going to pass each other. And yeah, he's got a cannon here. He's going to start sieging down this uh, sacred site, and we're going to try to secure this sacred site. Yep. So it's just a big old trade. Although we are getting a lot of his infrastructure here, though we will lose some as well. Looks like we have some production buildings back here, and even our madrasa. I've got way too many units here doing nothing. These uh, ranged units aren't really effective, and these spearmen are more effective when they're stabbing down royal knights. So we're going to pivot over this way. And I'm glad we've got some culverins in the production. We do need culverins. The bombard's great. We can use it to just rip down walls and destroy his, um, his houses. But really, we need these culverins to target his royal cannons. Sure. We are right back here. This is scary. He's coming forward with the knights, and it's only when he slips through here that I realize how much of a problem this is because I've got villagers back here. I've got traders moving back and forth. I'm about to lose my entire trading operation. He's smart to run past. 
Really like that move by him. Just move right past. Oh, and these walls are just completely ineffective. Yeah, now he's finding the trading operation, my gold mining. Over here, he sent a bunch of royal knights. Like, he's going to kill all of this. And I'm unsure where to send the rest of my forces. Especially because I'm losing the important stuff here. I decide to forfeit this side of the map, pull back, and secure what we have. This was a bit ambitious, and he's just going to ride his Royal Knights past. So we need to protect our base right now. So now I'm pretty much rallying units to the front of my base. Or at least I hope I am, because we need to stop these knights. Yeah, look at that. They're coming after all of my villagers. And yep, there I go. Now the spearmen are going to start protecting my my uh, what I've secured. Ugh, going to lose villagers over here. This is so painful. Look at all these villagers. It's just non-stop kills, but we're engaging here. We're getting the knights there. Now there's these knights and these knights to clean up. And fortunately, we've identified where his villagers are. And we're taking them. So we're going to move into this wood line, and we're going to move into this long-distance gold mining operation that he's got going on. Oh, that's a lot of villagers. Yeah, we've got to deal with all this. Looks like we got the knight cluster there. There might still be knights over here, and he still has knights over here burning down my markets. But we're getting all these villagers. And of course, over here, we're engaging with his units. Down here, we've put crossbowmen in his farmlands. Yeah, we're just cutting down villagers. Wow. Very effective. Just a few ranged units in the farmlands can do big damage. Wow. So who's coming out on top? Everyone's losing all of their villagers. Well, the person who can produce villagers faster is going to come out ahead. I have three town centers. I'm down to 73, 72, dropping. So I'm, I have my three town centers, although I'm not actually producing villagers just yet. I haven't realized how much I've lost. He is on two town centers, but he is in the Imperial Age. And for the French, you can produce villagers faster and faster as you go through the ages. But we're still getting villager kills. It's still happening. And we're really spreading our units out. Okay. The dust seems to have settled. We've lost our trading operation, but we are building it back. So it's, it's going to come back eventually, slowly, but eventually. We've cleaned up the knights that were harassing our base. I'd love to put down some walls to stop the, the, uh, the bleeding. And we're putting keeps down. We didn't actually lose too many keeps. He lost this one. I lost this one. But it looks like we've still secured... We, we still got this sacred site. The center never really went into doubt. You can see we're actually both chopping away at this center here. And we're killing villagers. Uh, he needs to deal with this, uh, this keep. Oh, he is dealing with the keep. He's got his royal cannons, and I'm so happy that I kept my culverins moving around the map and eventually got them to the center. Yeah, we'll probably lose this keep because these cannons just do too much damage, but we're going to try and snipe these expensive royal cannons right here. Yeah, the culverins are so good. They're perfect for taking out siege units. And now we'll deal with his villagers. We've still got units out here. We actually destroyed his town center. Did these units completely burn it down? That's incredible. That's how long they were there? Wow. I might have to go back and watch that at the end. Putting down stone walls to try and secure this sacred site. We're still duking it out in the center, and I don't really like the looks of this. It's not as secure as I think. I mean, I've got these culverins back here, and yeah, here come the Royal Knights. We need units rallied here. We're trying to get our villagers back. We're back up to 75, and you can see I got 10 in the production queue, so that's good. But we're out of gold. 
We have tons of food and wood, so you can see we're making mostly spearmen and archers. We got even some camel archers in the mix. Important to get camel archers every so often. The archers are pretty much useless. They aren't doing any damage to any of these units. And just look at his army. That is insane. I don't know how we're going to stop this. I need to start rallying units back towards my base because this force of his is way too strong. He's even mixing in hand cannoneers. Fortunately, the outposts here are constantly firing, and Springald emplacements do at least do good damage versus these uh, units because it, it has enough kind of punch to get through their armor. But of course, while he's doing this, I'm forcing him to try and come back. I'm saying, if you're going to send your army out, you're going to lose all these villagers in the farmlands. So as he's slowly advancing with this slow army of man-at-arms that's trading pretty effectively with my army, but I'm just going to keep producing. This whole time he's taking shots from these um, Springald emplacements. And yeah, we're just duking it out. My spearmen are trading effectively with his knights. Look at how many knights he has left. He's only got a few cavalry. It's now just down to these man-at-arms. He's very smart sending these royal knights to harass my markets again. I'm down to three traders, but I sent some spearmen to kind of patrol this area of the map. You can see he's still coming forward with all of those units, but now they're looking really battered, worn down, not a lot of hit points. And meanwhile, my gold is finally flowing back in thanks to this keep and that secures this gold mine and this gold mine which is really just being secured by a few patrolling spearmen. These units need to be not in my base, but at one of my resource deposits. Meanwhile, we are just roasting everything here. I think my opponent's income, you can see, I'm way ahead in food, way ahead in wood, way ahead in gold. His economy is starting to just crumble. And I think that's going to be game. We just poked too many holes through his uh, his walls. We got in. We got way too many units just into his farmlands. He didn't. He didn't end up putting like some knights on patrol through his base, which can be a good strategy when you don't want to lose all these villagers. So I, I think he played it pretty well. Uh, I liked the man-at-arms choice for the French. People usually don't expect it, but um, we just did a lot of economic damage. When we were able to hold on with our three town centers, I think that really sealed the deal. Was hoping to get a sacred victory here, but he kept effectively ripping down my defenses and clearing the sacred sites. And I really appreciate his uh, diligence at taking out my traders. It's just the late game strategy for the Abbasid, so you really have to deny it. Unfortunately, there was a lot of gold still on the map for me to take. It was a great game. I really hope to encounter uh, Anarin in the future. Out of curiosity, I really want to see that. Um, I really want to see that second town center. Did. Did it truly get burned down by just a handful of spearmen? Okay, here we are. We're at minute like 34 of the match, and I sent some, I mean, it looks like four spearmen the long way around, and they're starting to torch the town center after killing some of these villagers. His army is just rolling back and forth. Oh, he's trying to protect these villagers. Didn't realize that he actually made it up to three town centers. So this. This was the second one he built. This is the third one he built. Oh my god, my my spearmen are burning it down. Four spearmen burned down this entire town center. They're doing 20 damage a hit. Wow. Boy, when there's just nothing to defend the town center, these, these spearmen tear it down quick. Granted, they are elite spearmen. I mean, they get all this bonus damage, but wow. I mean, in the future, if I get units into their back lines, 
I'll just burn this down. I gotta do that in the future. They only have 2,500 health. I mean, what? We started at like 34, like minute 3420, and now it's 3550. So it takes maybe two minutes. Less than two minutes to just completely burn down a uh, town center. And yep, now all the villagers have to run off and do long distance uh, gathering. Now they have to return their food all the way over here. Wow, way to go, Four Spearmen. Super proud of you guys. Well, like I said, it was a good match. Hoping to see more from this opponent in the future. And I will catch you next time for the next game. See you then. Bye.